very often uh, from the from the colleagues, you know, I have this answer that I, I'm giving dawah already by uh, being a good Muslim, by uh, by being a, you know a good member of the society and being good to neighbors and so on. And I also argue that you know, if the Prophet was in uh, his cave and he just showed to people that he is the best of character, people probably wouldn't guess about the Tawheed. And also in this question, I would like to ponder about. Uh, we hear from some scholars saying that the condition for the Muslims to be in uh, in the West, actually, you know, outside, you know, uh, the land of the Muslims, I would say, uh, that is that he has to give at least dawah. It's a great question. If we say that somebody should give dawah. And they say, my da'wah is I'm a good worker or an honest neighbor. And we tell them that that's great. That's the beginning. But the Prophet ﷺ, who was the most honest of people, and the best in khulqan, the best in his mannerisms, did not just do that. Yes, he had good da'wah in his akhlaq, but he also called people to tawheed sarihan, clearly. Hmm? So if we are following the way of the Prophet ﷺ, then good akhlaq and being a good worker, and a good student, and a good neighbor, and a good son, and a good father is great, but that's the beginning. That cannot be the end of it. Because the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba, showed us practically that they did more than just that. That's the first thing. Second, being in the West, as Shaykh Ibn Taymin and others have written, that there is basically three, maybe a fourth, reason to be in the land of Kufa. The first is if you are physically in, the, in danger of losing your life. Like there's a hit out there. And I don't know about you guys, but there is no international hits on me yet. I'm good for so far. After the UK trip, I don't know. So that excuse is not there for us. Secondly, you cannot find risk at all in the Muslim lives. I don't mean the same lifestyle. Like I don't mean that you gotta have an M-class beamer and you gotta have an iPhone 14 and all that. No, but you can't survive. And I think all of us could survive in the Muslim. And I don't mean your land. Like people think Muslim land means your ethnic land. No, every land of Muslims is our land. Hussein is just as rightful to be in Saudi Arabia as any Saudis, because the lands of Islam are the lands of all Muslims. This idea of, you know, I'm from this country, my passport is not Islamic. Tayyip. So those two are not applicable. The third is if you're there for da'wah. What does it mean that you're there for da'wah? Is that da'wah is your first priority. I mean, yes, you may work. Yes, you have family. Yes, you have to get education. Yes, you have to do all those things. But that is all secondary to da'wah. So if you have a work meeting and you have a da'wah obligation, you tell work, I'm sorry, I got an obligation. That's how we should be in the West. The fourth, some I mentioned that there's a particular type of knowledge that you want to learn that needs in the Muslim land. I don't think any of you guys are nuclear physicists and you're not going to take that back to any Muslim country. So that's not applicable for us either. Right? In the, you are, mashallah, great job. So if we claim that we are here for da'wah, and by the way, this is not just for somebody who came to the UK. If you are English, English. If you are the queen's unknown great-grandson that might be going for king because Charles is getting old. Um, even if you are that English, and you're Muslim, the land of Muslims is your land. And the land of Kufr is not your land. Our bonds are with Iman. So if we are here, if we're in America, if we're in Hungary, if we're in wherever, we need to make da'wah a priority. <coughs> Not everybody will be debating. By da'wah, I don't mean that you're going to go and get a Bible and a, no. But you need to be involved. You come to Brother Hussein and say, Brother, I work seven days a week, which I don't know why you work seven days a week. I can't go out, but what I can do is here's some money. Here's, I can drive you there and bring it back. I can do this. Whatever I can do to help. Right? Some of you can come and say, Brother, I don't know much. But I can pass flyers out. If they have a question, I'll bring them to you. Somebody can say, look, I'm not comfortable being at the table, but you bring your da'wah team, I will teach them Quran, I will teach them hadith, I will teach them these things, and then I will support you, right? But you need to be involved. You need to get it going. Because if you're not, don't expect that the situation of the Muslims will change. Either. Okay? We talk about young people going away from the deen and things. 
If you're giving da'wah and you're calling, then you're going to protect your environment. And if you're not, you're going to be called. You know, shaitan doesn't sleep. Hassan al-Basri was asked, does shaitan sleep? He said, if shaitan slept, we would get a break. <coughs> but shaitan doesn't sleep. When you go to sleep, he's in your dreams. He's out whispering. On it. Yeah. <coughs> Only time shaitan runs away. When? When you give the adhan. And in the dua, after the adhan, you say, this is the complete da'wah of Tama, Complete da'wah. So when he hears that da'wah, complete da'wah, he runs. What does that tell you? When you give da'wah, you can protect yourself from shaitan. And when you abandon da'wah, when you're not calling towards Islam, then you will be called towards other things. Then other ideologies will affect you. We ask Allah to protect us. We want all the brothers to be firm on it.